good morning, everybody. I am, you know, sorry for the little bit of a delay. We had a few minor technical uh, difficulties, but I don't think that they're all uh, sorted out at this point. At least I hope so. Hopefully this is it. And the rest of the day will be just as smooth as yesterday. So we want to welcome you guys to day two of the uh, 2020 Auditors Fall virtual in-person viewing party conference. <laughs> uh, we're going to be running everything um, in the same format as yesterday. So again, uh, if you're virtual, the county's email box is open. We're monitoring that along with the chat box. So if you want to you know, just drop us a chat, just even say hi. Uh, make sure that you do choose everyone in the uh, chat box uh, so that we all get to see it. Um, especially Lori and I, if you only do us privately, then I can't see what you send to Lori and Lori can't see what you sent to me, uh, especially if you have a question in there and she's speaking, uh, we need to make sure we both can see it. So um, if you're in person and you're at the viewing party, uh, please make sure you give your questions just like yesterday. Um, it looks like Jennifer has kind of taken that on um, and, and Vicki, they both can get us the questions to be included. And again, if you have any questions, uh, maybe at the end of today or tomorrow, go ahead and email those to us and we will include them in the special bulletin we're going to be putting out. Uh, the last thing I've got is registrations. If you are virtual, you, don't, you do not need to do anything. Uh, just logging in gets you on the registration. You should be good. If you're in person, there should be a registration form for today. You should have, should have signed one yesterday. There should be one today. Please make sure that you get that signed. That's what we use. Uh, to mail out certifications, um, and if you don't have a signature there, there's no certification going to be sent out. Uh, with all of that and all those housekeeping issues, uh, why don't we go ahead and get started today. Um, I think this morning we're going to welcome um, our Auditor of State, Tara Klutz. I'm going to give the welcome this morning, and then I'm going to turn over to my team for the presentation. But um, because this is the very first option in live or in person option at a conference I've been to all year, I just wanted to thank the Grand Wayne Center. I wanted to thank the State Board of Accounts. I wanted to thank your Auditors Association because it is wonderful, even though we're very far apart and spaced out, to see faces while I'm presenting. Um, a few things I've learned during the pandemic, we've all been working, but Zoom can be exhausting after a while. And so I'm fortunate for this opportunity. I wanna welcome all the people that are joining us virtually, because if you would have signed up for in-person, we wouldn't have been able to have a conference because we wouldn't have been able to social distance. So thank you for everybody doing their part as we tried something new. I know Ricky was very nervous about making this work, but I am um, thankful that it is working and that I get a chance to see you guys. Um, the team that we have here today is myself and Jared Bond, the communications director. And then we have Kim Diller, our local government director. She's gonna be up here presenting. And last but not least, we have Janie Cope. So, um, you know, she, I don't know where she is, but she's probably off giving some property tax advice somewhere, um, talking to one of you all. Um, the other team that we work with very closely is um, the DLGF and the State Board of Accounts. And um, I want to tell you that we have monthly meetings with them because communication probably is the one piece that we know we're going to have to get right in order to be successful. And so I often get the opportunity to ask auditors how our communication is um, because, you know, we see it from one side. We don't see it from the other side. And consistently, I'm, the general feedback is that it's very good from all of our offices. And so if you ever have the um, experience where you don't feel like you've got a timely response or you're not satisfied with the response, please let us know. Please let Paul, Wes, or I know because I think that is the first step in making sure that we can um, address those concerns because I know we want to have good communication. Um, it, our jobs are a little easier than your jobs. We're not, in, we're not responsible for implementing all of them we're responsible for giving you guidance. Um, you guys are the elected officials that are responsible 
for administrating your budgets, administrating your property tax, and we want to be helpful. Um, just an example is just last week, I found out one of our voicemail boxes, um, we weren't getting the emails sent to our, um, if we got a voicemail, usually we get an email alerting us that there's a voicemail. Well, somewhere in the last month, we stopped getting those emails. And so we started digging around and we found out we had over 70 voicemails in an email box or in a voicemail box that haven't been answered. And, I'm, and the message just to rub it in says, we'll be back to you within 24 hours. So after getting over the shock and the embarrassment, <laughs> um, we were able to work with our IOT team, which took a few days and we, we got them all back. Um, but things like that happen sometimes. And if you let us know like, hey, I called you last week, we didn't get a response, then um, we'll know it sooner and hopefully be able to help you out. Um, a couple things I wanted to talk about, we're all in 2020, so we're all working through 2020. We know 2020 is different, but I'm just wondering what after 2020 looks like. And so thinking just a year ahead, we're all gonna have to go through a CARES grant audit. Um, I think that's gonna be challenging. Um, we know that they keep changing the rules and, and I, I'm not blaming anybody. Everybody's taking this as it comes out them, including the feds. But as we're spending, then they change the rules and then they change the audit requirements on those. And so um, you should be thankful you have a calendar year end, 1230. We had a 630 year end. So we've already spent some of that money and we already had to turn a CIFA in and I'm sure we'll be modifying it. And so I think that just preparing yourself um, for the date you made the expense is, is pretty obvious, but like, what was going on in your county at that time? Were you just trying to, to react to make sure that people were safe? Um, did you have time to do a cost benefit analysis? Um, if you did, great. If you didn't, um, document you know, what stage you guys were in. So I think that's gonna be helpful when we get audited like a year later, after we know so much more information, it's gonna help the auditors and us put things in perspective when it comes to going through those audits. Um, another thing to think about is the state's revenue has had an impact, unfortunately, because of the economic shutdown um, in order to catch up with the pandemic. And that will eventually trickle down to local governments in the form of services and grants. And so just to be prepared on what that might look like and make sure if you do have extra this year or you do find yourself with money that you're not sure what to do to stockpile it away because I do think we're gonna need it in the, in the next few years. Another specific revenue type that I think is going to be impacted is gaming revenue and, and wagering revenue. Um, if you're a county that receives the 33 million in the sharing or if you're a county that gets the hold harmless amount, there was new legislation that says, if, we, if the state collects less than we did in 2020, your distribution will be proportionately less. We, we don't anticipate that necessarily happening, but if we go to another economic sh shutdown where we have to shut down a lot of things, including large gathering places like casinos, that revenue will be impacted. Um, if you're one of the counties that operate significantly on gaming revenue, I would um, definitely begin, if you haven't already, um, determining a backup source over the next few years as you try to think of other ways and what, how you would operate without that funding. Um, only a couple other things I wanted to talk about. We are gonna try to be able to, to um, put the presentation up on the screen while you guys, um, while we're going through it so you can see it here in person and also just like you've been able to do it um, yesterday, see it while Kim is talking. Um, I think that will be helpful. Um, if it doesn't work, you can try to minimize your screen at home and pull it up electronically, or if you already have the paper, um, that's fantastic. Um, with that, I'd like to bring um, Kim Diller up and get started. And Janie will be here too. Um, I'm sure she's got some good <laughs> jokes if we let her if we let her get up here. Uh, speaking of jokes, okay, I can't help you. I was sitting here yesterday, and Jared texted me texted me this joke that I should use today. And, and now we call them dad jokes. I have no idea where dad jokes got the term, but he's like, you know, teachers are calling their students who are in the room roomies and their students that are online zoomies. And I said, I'm not using that joke. I said, but then I changed it. And I said, well, if I get to call my people at home homies, I'm gonna use that joke. So we've got my roomies and I've got my homies. And so 
With that, I'm leaving you with that dad joke. And as I turn it over to Kim, she is on her way up. Uh, thank you. Good morning. Um, we may be having a few technical difficulties this morning because the intention was that um, the slideshow would be up here and then also available to um, the virtual audience. Um, we're working on that as we speak. Um, in the meantime, um, it was sent out ahead of time. It's available on the SBOA website. And then um, if anyone here needs hard copies, we do have them. So if you wanna raise your hand, if you need one, uh, Jared will um, pass them out. Um, in the meantime, um, just bear with me and I'm just gonna talk and um, hopefully you can follow along. So um, thank you for having us today. I'm Kim Diller. I am uh, with the local government division uh, with J.D. Cope, the superstar of the local government division. Um, about me, uh, we, so I think I've only been in front of you guys once. That was for my living room. Um, I started in this position a week before the uh, shutdown began. So it was perfect timing. Um, but the joy is that since I was in front of you last, um, I have been through my first settlement from the auditor's office side. So um, I am one step ahead from where I was before. Um, so today we're going to talk about um, the December, the upcoming settlement for December, tax advances, um, the upcoming abstract, and then I thought that I would just go over a few of the memos that went out this year um, from our office and just to, we, sometimes, you know, when you get things in writing, it's maybe not quite as clear. And so I just wanted to have an opportunity to talk through those things and then also answer any questions that you might have. So for the upcoming settlement, we will be using the FTP site um, as we did um, in the June settlement and as you've done before um, to upload, for you to download the forms and then to upload them to us. Um, the uh, link to that is available on our website, and it's in the slide presentation as well. So if you need that, okay. So um, if you want to forward through, that's just about me. You guys don't care about that. Keep going. <laughs> and then one more. Okay. So there is the, thank you, there is the link to the um, FTP website. Um, it, again, it's available on our website. And if you don't have access to it, or I think we may be getting to that. So um, okay, if you could go to the next one. So just to kind of go through what's going to be required, it's going to be um, the same as what um, was required in June. You're going to... Um, complete the checklist, which we'll go through here in a minute more in detail. Um, but that checklist is just basically for you to be able to um, ensure that you've completed everything that's essential for a successful settlement. Um, Crow is going to be conducting the review again. So what happens is that they review it and then um, they send it to us and say, okay, this looks good to us then we review it again and then um, discuss any issues that may have been found. And then the, um, then we, the approval comes from us. Uh, we will email a pre-approval to you. So what that means is that your forms all look good. You can go ahead and then um, you're going to email us your certification, basically saying, yes, we, this is everything that we believe to be correct. And then when we get that, along with um, all of your funds, all of the funds, the distribution goes out to the locals, and then the funds due to the state have to be remitted to the state by December 31st. 
and your settlement has to go out by December 31st. Um, so on the AOS FTP site, all of you should have a username and a password. If you do not, just contact local government AOS, uh, local government at auditor.in.gov. That comes to Jamie and I, and we can assist you in getting you set up. If you forget your password or if you have any technical difficulties, just contact us and we can help you out. Um, again, so when you go in there, what you're going to do is find your county and then um, you're going to uh, click the from settlements folder to get the forms. And then you're going to click on the two settlements to upload your forms and send them to us. The settlement checklist is um, it, it, it's just ensuring that you have everything that is required, right? So there's 30 items on this checklist um, with nine sections. So the first section is just your verification of tax advances and excise tax difference with your county treasurer. So um, if, if there were the you, you, so basically, you're just verifying that you and the county treasurer have gotten together and any differences have been reconciled. The next three are related to the Form 105 for Sections A, B, and C. And then you just have a checklist for um, the other forms for, um, that are also required and then the excise tax allocation worksheet, the excise tax reconciliation worksheet. And then you have this last section that basically you check off and make sure, okay, yes, I've uploaded every single form that's required. Um, on the settlement forms, this is just a list of them. You guys have already been through this. Most of you, the majority of you have already been through one settlement. I know that because I saw you. And um, so I'm just going to briefly go through these. We've got the Form 17TC, which is your Certificate of Tax Refund Claims and Property Tax Relief. There's a tab for each taxing district where you're going to list each taxpayer to whom a refund was paid. Um, and of that refund, how much was property tax relief? And then all of that loads into a summary tab at the front that takes all the information from the individual tabs and then lists it for each taxing district. Then you have your excise tax allocation worksheet. This reconciles the license excise tax certified by the county treasurer to the county auditor funds ledger. Um, typically, any differences are due to cutoff dates. Then you have the 49TC. This is your county treasurer's certificate of tax collections. This is completed by both you and your county treasurer. I do just note that knowing ahead of time, you're going to need your county treasurer's assistance with this. Um, so make sure that they know ahead of time, too, that this is coming. Um, I, I did see in the spring settlement that um, maybe sometimes the treasurer wasn't available. You guys were in a time crunch. So just, just start thinking about that now and kind of taking into account their accessibility. Um, the treasurer calculates and reports the certified tax collection. The auditor calculates and reports, reports the taxes to be apportioned and distributed. So basically your treasurer's reporting, this is how much we took in, and then you're reporting and certifying, this is how much is going to each unit and how much will be distributed. This is by taxing district. Your form 102 is your apportionment sheet. It's completed for each taxing district and it calculates the total funds available for apportionment and the amount to be apportioned to each taxing unit by fund. Then you have your form 105. This is your settlement sheet for the county. It's, it's the summary of form 102. Um, so your Form 102 is for every taxing district. Your Form 105 is for the county as a whole. Then you have your quietus worksheet. Um, this assists with the final steps of settlement. Um, the property, there's a property tax tab, an excise tax tab, and an additional property tax quietus, and then the treasurer's cash for property tax. 
basically this is just you're listing out each type of distribution how much is going to be distributed and then the treasurer is going to say this is how much cash we have on hand and you're going to hope that there's enough cash to cover your distribution if not call me um, and then in december we have the correction of error summary um, this is just your detail of line 33 of form 102 so there's a line on form 102 that is your correction of error summary this form allows you to uh, give the detail behind that. Um, I want to dig more into the excise tax allocation worksheet because we did make changes to that in the spring. It caused some confusion. We did have to make a change to that form kind of midway. So I'm hoping that what we were able to do um, and make changes to that form was actually helpful and was able to um, capture all the information that we need. Um, the changes were related to um, the statute. So it, in code, the only excise tax um, just that is subject to the excise allocation worksheet are motor vehicle excise tax, boat excise, excise tax replacement credit, and aircraft excise. All the other forms of excise are to be distributed, but not included in the excise tax allocations. So those other excise taxes, it's auto rental excise, heavy equipment rental excise, and vehicle sharing excise. Those are outside of the calculation of Sweden which is the statewide excise tax allocation. So that first group of excise taxes are what are going to be used to calculate how much gets paid to the state for that portion of excise tax. The other ones you're still collecting, you're still distributing, but you're not including it in the calculation for how much gets taken in by the state. So what we did on that spreadsheet was we, we listed all the um, excise taxes in each column that are subject to SWEDA. And then we listed the other ones um, at the end so that everything is accounted for. You can sh and then we have a total excise to be distributed. Um, we did also make the change that um, we're formatting the year um, so it's not a number so it doesn't end up in the calculation one of you caught that thank you um so are there any questions um or i guess we can cover that but if there are any questions on that i do want to answer any questions on that while i'm here so if there are please submit those questions Um, so AOS uh, does the settlement review basically after Crow um, reviews it. We're going through, we're verifying that all the forms agree. We're verifying that Form 105, Section A1, Lines 3 through 6, agree to the abstract. And then we're also um, verifying that Section C of Form 105. Um, any changes above 20% are going to be reviewed, and we're going to ask questions. So as you're going through this, as you're going through settlement, if you're seeing any major changes um, in numbers compared to prior year or to, to the prior settlement, just be make sure you have the documentation um, because we're going to be asking for that. We're also going to verify that your excise tax reconciles between the treasurer and the auditor. And then um, we're going to review any items reported on line 41 of the Form 105. We did run into a couple of issues in the spring. Um, we had an, an increased number of resubmissions by the counties. Um, I'm not sure exactly what caused that. That was an item that Crow also pointed out to us. Um, so if you are having issues um, early on, 
please let us know. Um, or when you submit it for the first time, if you're not sure that it's complete, please let us know and maybe not submit it right away. But I, I don't know if there were just, you were finding corrections later on or if information came up or, or if maybe it was caused by um, the delay in property tax. Um, the, the due date wasn't changed, but the penalty was um, waived. So you were able to collect property taxes a little later. I don't know if it was all of that, but just um, that's something that we saw. So if you're having issues or if you were one of those counties that had numerous resubmissions, please reach out to me um, so that we can kind of talk through that before settlement this year for the, for in December. We also had a number of counties where the excise tax reconciliation, that it did not reconcile between the treasurer and the auditor. There were differences. Those differences must be um, found and reconciled and solved um, before your December settlement. So we have to have that to zero. So if you're not getting that to zero, please let us know and we will help you any way that we can. Um, so that settlement, um, again, that's upcoming. Um, that's going to be your life um, for the next couple of months. So um, if you're new and you're still having trouble, please reach out to us um, and we'll assist in any way we can. I hope to be able to get out to a couple of counties to kind of um, watch you do your settlement so I can see it from your perspective. I think that will help both me and you. Um, so if you are interested in me coming and, and sitting with you for a couple of days, just let me know. Um, so now we're going to talk about property tax advances. Um, this year is probably the first time for some of you that you've actually had property tax advances uh, to your units. Um, because of the waiver of the late fee for property tax um, collections. So um, I just kind of wanted to go over this just in case you do have units that are requesting advances before your December settlement. So it actually states in code um, that the auditor may not advance any more than the lesser of 95% the total amount collected at the time of the advance or 95% of the amount that is anticipated to be distributed at the semi-annual distribution. So, so it, th those are really the only instructions that you have in regards to advances. Basically, um, tip, so there are some counties where they just automatically do advances. There's some counties that require the units to request it of them. Um, work with your county treasurer to determine how you want to do this if you've never done it before. And if you want to see how other counties have done it, just contact me and I can get you in touch with them. Um, so for in the December settlement property tax worksheet, there is a column that you list any property tax advances that you did give out. So that does just need to be accounted for and it's just saying, okay, so here's, here's what our December distribution would look like. This is how much we already gave out. And so this is what's left. Um, so now we're gonna move on to the abstract because that's coming up um, this spring. So your abstract is um, your certified copy of the property, assessments, taxes, deductions, and exemptions for taxes payable in that year in each tax taxing district of the county. You're gonna submit that through Gateway. Um, so your timeline, we're gonna have a pre-abstract survey available to you um, in January. Um, and then in February, you're going to work on the property tax relief workbook for any counties who have property tax relief. And then in February and March, you're going to upload your files to Gateway. In February and March, we're going to, well, you're going to verify the accuracy that, 
um, so basically you're working with your tax um, software vendor um, through this whole process. So they're gonna upload tax or text files for you or they're going to give you these text files, you're going to upload them. You're gonna verify that all the information is correct. Then you're gonna complete, there's questions that you have to answer as part of this process and then you're gonna submit it for review. And then in March is when the abstract approval um, is given. And then prior to the June settlement, we have the circuit breaker adjusted distribution rates posted on the gateway. Um, this year, there is um, one new change regarding the oil and gas assessments, late penalty distributions. So typically on your abstract, you're listing um, late penalties, but those have been for personal property, oil and gas assessments. This is a new, um, it's a new penalty for late fees. And this is related to real property. So we're gonna have that listed separately on the abstract. It's gonna be verified on your Form 49TC. Um, it will be included in your settlement. And like I said, there's gonna be a separate, so there's gonna be a personal property tax late assessment penalties column, and then an oil and gas late assessments penalties column. This only applies to a few counties, but it is new, it's gonna be there. And so if you see it and you don't know what it is, that's why I'm telling you now so that you know Either it applies to you or it doesn't. If you don't know, let me know. Um, but that's something separate that you will have to list. So that is it for abstract. Now, um, we did send out a few memos this year that I kind of wanted to go through. Um, three specifically. The first one is the 2020 vehicle sharing excise tax. This is what we just talked about on the change that was made to the excise allocation worksheet. Um, the vehicle sharing excise tax is a new ex kind of excise tax that was passed, I'm not sure when it was passed, um, last year, but you started seeing it this year. Um, you receive it from the Department of Revenue to your county treasurer on May 20th and November 20th of each year. It is distributed among the taxing units in the same manner that property taxes are apportioned and, distrib and distributed. It's based on the location in which that tax was originally paid. And again, this is not included in the um, calculation for the amount of excise that is paid to the state. The next one um, was in regard to the riverboat wagering tax revenue sharing distribution. So there is a, um, in, in the code, 30, the first $33 million of wagering taxes are to be set aside and distributed as revenue sharing to each county that doesn't have a riverboat. Because of COVID-19, our revenues for wagering tax were down this year. So typically we would receive that 33 million in the first month and it was never an issue and you just saw your share in that first month and we were done. This was the first year that that didn't occur. And so you received a portion of that $33 million um, both in the first month and in the second month. Um, it was, you received the remainder. So that was that memo that went out. We just wanted to ensure that that you understood, but also going forward, there's always that chance that we're not going to get that full 33 million in the first month. So for just budgeting purposes, for cash flow purpose, planning purposes, just know that um, that might, depending on what happens with our economy going forward, um, or any, even any, any changes regard that could possibly affect wagering taxes. Just know that that's not a guaranteed payment in your first month, our first month of our fiscal year. Um, and that might be split over multiple months. 
Um, the last memo um, that was just recently sent out was the remittance of forfeitures to the Common School Fund. Um, we have been receiving some of that money directly from other units within your county. So like maybe the sheriff's department or the prosecutor, they're sending that directly to us. That should be going to you. And then you send that with um, all the forfeitures accumulated twice per year. So basically after, at settlement, you're sending that as part of your um, fines and forfeitures. So um, if you have, if you, you may not even know that they're doing this, but just that memo went out, not just to you, but it went out to um, all of the other offices in your county that might be collecting this um, to let them know that it needs to come to you. So if you get any questions, um, that's what that's related to. Um, so that concludes this, the, I guess the, the real part of the presentation. There are a couple of items that I wanted to bring up. Um, Kim? Yes. We do have one question that came in okay. online. I noticed it popped up. Um, and that was, how is online revenue from gaming distributed? If you could first repeat the question for the group that is watching virtually. So the question is, how is online gaming revenue distributed? distributed. Yes, not that you know the answer, but that is at least the question. <laughs> Um, I do not know offhand, and I'm not even gonna, uh, this is where Janie would, where's Janie? Where's my shining star? Do you know? I would assume that it is distributed in the same way as any other revenue, because I know that we don't do a separate type of distribution for just online uh, wagering. Um, so I'm going to have to look into that. I understand what you're asking because this is new, right? This is a new, this is new gambling for, um, the state of Indiana. So that is, so I will look into that and let you know. Okay. So, so yeah, we'll, we will come up with a communication and send that out to you. That is a great question because that is new um, and that's something that we haven't addressed yet. A couple of things that I did want to mention. One is that um, the Auditor State's Office has had some um, issues with emails. Um, there has been, um, as I guess, our, some of our email accounts have been hacked. So you may be receiving emails from people from the auditor's office, or it looks like it's coming from the auditor's office, or it looks like it's coming from the local government division email account. Um, if it has a link, or if it looks odd, or if you're not sure, do not click on the link in that email. Typically, you can hover over any link that is in, a, in an email, and it will show you the target um, of that of the address of where that link would take you to. And um, you'll know immediately if that doesn't look like something that um, would belong to us, specifically if it doesn't have in.gov in it, it's not ours. So um, just be very careful with any emails that you receive from us. Um, and then let us know. Don't forward the email to us. Just let us know if you've received any emails that look suspicious. Um, but I just want to alert you that do not click on any links that look suspicious, even if it looks like it came from our office. Um, so we do have upcoming deadlines. Uh, November 1st, uh, fines and forfeitures are due. Um, that is by statute. Um, that deadline, so um, so please get those in if you haven't already. Um, and I think that's it. Are there any other questions? I really appreciate uh, your patience um, as I've learned 
um, and I'm continuing to learn in this position. I've really enjoyed the opportunity to get to know some of you um, just through questions that you've sent in to me. Um, everything that you ask um, is helping me learn. So if something looks odd or you're not sure about it, um, please let us know and we are happy to help. And um, like I said, if you'd like me to come and watch you do your settlement, please let me know and I will be happy to schedule that time because I really wanna be able to have the opportunity to get out into the field and get to know some of you on um, more than through a Zoom call <laughs> or through a phone or through an email. So with that, uh, that's it. Thank you so much.